There is no stuffy, upright, best behaviour. Efficiency only lines here. Well, this will be a proper party bike, if that's the mood you're in. My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a pro bike tester for 23 years. And today, the bike I've been testing is the NS Synonym TR1. So, so this is a very rapid bike. I'm gonna try and make it a very rapid review. Distinctive factors are full carbon frame set, 120 mil travel out the front with a Fox factory 34 step cast fork. Rear shock is a Fox float Evol large volume, 120 mil travel again, 42.5 mil stroke. And both of them are connected with cables to this remote lock out here. So all sorts of confusion going on there, which we'll get into later. But that slack steering angle is matched by a 2.4 inch Maxxis Recon tire. Geometry is really, really striking on this bike. 66 degree head angle, 76 degree seat angle, and that vast 490 mil reach on there. But as a caveat to that, that's a 491 mil seat post. So you can see, I had to completely slam the dropper into there with 150 mil stroke. If you go for the medium, this is the large. If you go for the medium, you get a 440 mil seat tube, but you still get a 40, 66 mil reach. So that might suit a lot more conventional riders who are still gonna get those slack angles. Bottom bracket height is super low at 326. 438 mil chainstay with zero pivots on the back. So it's a flex stay bike, but that means it's got plenty of room for 2.3 tire on the back. Uh, SRAM XO Eagle, carbon crank to save some more weight, and 34 tooth chainset fitted as standard. Trans Fox transfer dropper post, then NS's own 760mm bars, it's a 60mm stem, and lots of fancy little gold detailing on it. That's the bike standing still. Now let's get it moving and talk about how it rides. And the short answer is this bike is a properly rude trail racer. And most of that comes down to that super long top tube and that slack head angle. I mean, there are times. <laughs> kind of lumpier, more off camber, routely descent, like that, or rocky sections where, you know, the fatter tyres on the narrow rims and the long, lightweight frame, and the cutaway legs on that step cast fork, all kind of start grouping up. And you can get the back end to torque out of line and the front end tank slot in a way that you never will do on a Santa Cruz tour boy or a Trek top fuel. And you have got this mad mess of cables up front. But then the weight is really good and it's got a really lovely kind of springy feel when you drive it there. So it really encourages you to charge on. And then of course, when you're faced with a long fire road or climb or a sprint, that's when being able to lock the bike out both ends really comes into it home. But as you can see, it's pretty confused. And with the uh, dropper post remote up the top now, and the lockout underneath where the remote would normally be, it's easy to get those mixed up at first. And even with 180 mil front rotor, these level brakes are pretty feeble and a wider rim would give you more, more tire support and less squirm when you start pushing it hard using those angles. But if you want a 12 kilo bike, you're gonna to have to live with some compromises in terms of control. And they've got the vast majority of the points absolutely spot on. Having a two position remote means that you can't adjust the low speed compression separately so you know the damping is what you've got but they've got a pretty good balance to be honest it's pretty tight off the top for that firm pedaling feel at tempo and then actually rolls through pretty well into the stroke without being too deep and bouncy one and rc2 models which have 100 mil degree sleeper both ends and the RC1 is 1.3 kilos lighter than this bike because it's got inner lighter tyres, 32 mil fork. But the reach is actually even longer. So the largest 500 mil. And while there is that lighter version, sub 12 kilo weight with that Icon rear tyre, it is still very flattering on legs and fitness, you know. 
This is the bike I've pulled off the wall for the uh, solstice ride we do. Six hour XC Epic. It's the bike that comes out on Thursday night fight club when I want to punish people. So it's a bike that will flatter your fitness if you're an enduro rider or a standard trail rider and flatter your skills if you're more of a XC whippet. And the kind of best parallel I can think of is like a racer in the off season and they're hitting the weights a bit more. So put on a bit of weight, but they're more strong. They actually turn up to parties occasionally and they're still gonna kick the ass of anyone but the purest thoroughbred racers when the, when the hammer goes down. And I don't care if this loses me cool points or if it is more efficient to sit down rather than stand up and punish yourself on climbs. But I've used the double lockout a lot on this bike. Even for really short sections, a single track line like that, occasionally you just need that psychological as well as physical boost of just totally locking the bike out so you can brace against it with every bit of sinew you've got. So don't be a lockout hater. Embrace that little lever. It can do good things. And it also means that while that, you know, flex day back end and the 42 and a half mil shock stroke means the back end is always going to be pretty tight and the shock's tuned that way as well. So you can, because you can lock it out, you can actually run softer pressures than you would probably normally use in this setup. So you get better big hit absorption, better tracking through rocky rooty mess like that. I mean, one thing I should say is this bike should come with something of a health warning because it will not back down whether that's on climbs against faster, lighter bikes or just against yourself. It wants to go absolutely full gas and it's the same on descent. Regardless of the bikes you're trying to stay ahead of or the skill sets they're riders. And as a result, I have spent a lot of time on this bike, nearly vomiting, going up. And also it staffed me off the single track in spectacular fashion a couple of times, but if you want a bike that is absolutely determined to get the maximum fun and speed out of every situation, well, this is the badger. So that's the uh, rapid live ride review uh, done. Thanks for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, please consider joining my uh, Patreon channel uh, for a small monthly fee like these folks here. And they get exclusive early and behind the scenes edits and a whole nother level of kind of buying advice, technical advice from me as a thank you. And there's also I'm going to put a link to the uh, solstice ride that I did on this bike and the kit check for that uh, at the end of this video, but that's been available to my Patreon subscribers for a long time. And there's a load of other exclusive content on there. So for now, thanks to Jiro and to Gore and to Camelback for providing kit. Thanks to Hotlines Europe for supplying the uh, NS bike. Uh, I've hung on to it far longer than I should have done, but that's just because I've been really, really enjoying it. But so. thanks for watching. I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV on the NS Synonym TR1.